Hello and welcome. So perhaps you already ran C tools for Windows and figure out that your drive has an issue. And you scanned your drive and it told you to use C, DOS, uh, C tools for DOS. That's what happened in my case uh, with another drive in the past. I did not record the first steps, only the C DOS part. I'm going to show you how to use C, C tools for DOS because that's what I did. That's how I fixed my drive. It was it had errors, bad sectors, and that got fixed apparently. So you go to Seagate's website, the link is in the description of this video, you download C do tools for DOS from here, over here, uh, should be, yeah, yeah, it's downloading, it's an ISO file, and um, let's see, so if we search for C tools DOS tutorial, it starts with diskette CD, yeah, so we're gonna figure out how to do this with a USB drive. For this we need Win32 Disk Imager, just download from its website, link is in the description. You will also need 7-zip, so get that. If you're not sure which bit version of Windows you have, just get the 32-bit one. Both these tools are free and open source. 7-zip you then have to install, and once Win32 Disk Imager is downloaded, just extract it. And go in there. And before you run it, this is actually a good moment to insert your USB drive, which you're going to use. There we go. This is pretty much empty. So now we run Win32 Disk Imager. And yes, as admin. Oh yeah, and for this we need an image file, which uh, this is not an image file, this is an ISO. So that's where 7-zip comes into play. We right-click this, 7-zip, extract to C tools, And inside C tools we see the ctools. IMA, which we renamed to .img. Yes, in case you don't see the file endings, go to View, Options, View, and uh, make sure Hide Extensions for Known File Tabs is deselected. Right, this file we need to uh, select in Disk Imager. Here we go, just select ctools.img. And that's all. We just write it, make sure you have the right device selected. This se tool seems to be smart enough not to select internal hard drive, so that's pretty good. Anyways, write and yes. And done. All right, make sure to safely remove a drive. And now plug it into the computer where the drive is that you need to uh, check and tr start that computer or restart it. And we're gonna continue with the camera. So I'm starting the computer and here we can see real quick which button to press. Okay, we missed it. Let's restart real quick with Control alt delete So on this motherboard I have to press Escape to select which drive to start from. And as you can see, I did put the USB drive into the USB port. So I'm going to select the USB drive. This is a rather old motherboard, modern ones look different, but here it is. Here is the free DOS for um, C tools, and here are C tools, really quickly. We're just going to hit accept. And um, if you feel unsafe at this point, well, it first loads the drives, make sure you select the right one. I can tell by uh, ST1000, this is the one I want to test, this is the one that's probably faulty. And here you can see the size, one terabyte, the other one, because of the 4000, yeah, four terabytes. So this is the ST1, etc., is the one I want to test. If you feel unsure about anything, about pressing anything, there is a good help contents. This text is quite good, very uh, readable. No techno babble, in my opinion. Of course, it refers to a CD, which is a joke, but hey, it was made a long time ago, but it still runs fine. It does explain uh, short test, long test. Also, it tells you that you will be able to fix stuff after the test. You can end, you can abort a long test without uh, fear of losing data. That's also very nice. I will get this file as a text file so you can read it on your phone while your computer is doing all this testing. But basically, I'm just going to run a test now. So we're going to start with basic test. Make sure the check mark is where you want, to, uh, with the drive you want to test. And we're gonna just do a short test. I wonder what an acoustic test is, but yeah, let's do a short test. Oh boy, an over temperature condition was detected prior to the test starting. 
the drive is or has been at or above 70 degrees Celsius. Do you want to continue a test? I have no idea what that means. And I do not know if it ever was. Let's not continue. So we're going to take a look at error codes. No, not related. Maybe known limitations. May not find or access hard disk drives when CMOS is set to non those drives. Okay. Cannot find drives that are completely non-functional. May not find a drive that is connected to an unsupported, usually very new chipset. Huh? Anyways, these seem to be not the issues here. Let's... I mean, do we even see this? Very strange. What if we do a basic test on the other drive? That one seems to be working just fine. Um, I think I will abort it, so... 10%? Okay, let's see, maybe we can do it real quick. Alright, so the other drive passed, that's nice. Let's do the short test on the uh, one terabyte one. And yeah, I mean, I backed up all the files. I can risk it. I mean, what is the difference between doing a test and using it as a drive anyways? Okay, we have a test code. Please save this code if you are planning a warranty exchange. Ha! That's long, long past. Unfortunately, your Seagate hard drive has failed an important diagnostic test possibly caused by problem sectors which are difficult to read. Now is a good time to make sure you have a current backup of your important data. Seagate recommends that you run a long test which has the ability to repair most problem sectors. C-Tools for DOS may be able to save you from the inconvenience and downtime of exchanging the drive. <laughs> they really don't want you to exchange the drive. Uh, for more information on the subject, yada yada yada, bad sector found, let's take a look at the contents of the help yet again. Bad sector found, number four. All right, here we are. This is a moderate length one. Please read and carefully consider all of the following information about our bad sector's found options. The bad sector is a small area on the disk drive that is reporting errors and cannot be accessed properly. Na new bad sectors, sometimes called ground defects, are often caused by some kind of physical damage. If a file or folder uses the sector, then the file is already incomplete or corrupt because the bytes are not readable. I hope you understand this. It's, it's okay. The following information applies only to Seagate technology. Okay, that's, that is... I mean, this is a Seagate drive. When CZ Tools discovers a bad sector for reading at the end of a scan, it displays a list of the bad sectors. Well, it didn't display them, because it was a basic test, right? If a sector is in use, then that file is incomplete or corrupt. When a bad sector happens to align with the foldered or directly listing structure, then the links to files and subfolders it manages may be broken. Sectors are often not in use. Uh, that's a bit confusing, in my opinion. You should carefully consider the importance of your data. <laughs> Think about the meaning of it all. Is it really all worth it? Should you maybe just quit your job? While well, the sector is currently unreadable, if the file or folder is important to you, then you may need professional recovery services to possibly reclaim the data. In this case, select no to exit without trying to reallocate blank replacement sectors on the drive. If you have dedicated, decided that the file or folder is replaceable, already backed up, or just not important to you, then you can tell CTools to attempt to overwrite a sector. Yes, please. By design, modern disk drives maintain sparse sectors for reallocation purposes. Usually, sectors become difficult to read long before they become impossible to read. In this situation, the actual data bytes in the sector are preserved and transferred to the new spare, uh, spare during a sector reallocation. Similarly, when a disk drive writes data and encounters a problem, the drive firmware ret uh, retries the problem sector and activates a replacement before giving successful write status. If you give permission to overwrite a bad sector, CTools will attempt to write a pattern of zeros to that sector. Usually the section will assist the disk drive firmware in managing the problem by retiring the problem LBA, what's that, and activating a spare in its place. Of course, Seagate is not responsible for lost data, and what we're gonna do is run a long test, and then, yes, we're gonna continue because I'm, I don't know, I mean, what if, what if it was over 70 degrees? What if? So it's gonna take hours. And then at the end, uh, there should be an option for us to possibly rescue the drive by making, apparently, making the hard drive 
remember which sectors to never use again. Let's hope that works. Let's see how long this takes. It is... <laughs> it is 10 p.m. See you tomorrow morning, maybe. I decided to leave this part in so you can see how the errors uh, add up. Oh boy, oh boy. We are at 0% on already. We have 6 errors, 7 errors, 8 errors. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, it's going up. Well, well, see you soon. Alright, so we are at 21%. 30 minutes have passed approximately, so this will probably take apparently 2 more hours. Oh boy, see you then. Here we are. It's nearly done, 99%. It took three hours in total. That's quite a quite a bit. And here it is. It's all over. Your C tools test code D six nine D B three five D. Uh, this is beyond warranty, definitely. I'm gonna go ahead and read all of this. Uh, please save this code if you are planning a warranty exchange. Seagate product warranty status depends on how the product is sold. If your hard drive is a component in an OEM system, then the OEM covers the drive warranty. Unfortunately, your Seagate hard drive has failed an important diagnostic test, possibly caused by problem sectors, which are difficult to read. Now is a good time to make sure you have a current backup of your important data. Done. Seagate recommends that you consider repairing the problem sectors. C tools for DOS may be able to save you from the inconvenience and downtime of exchanging the drive. For more information on the subject, see our help topic bad sector found. And now I'm just gonna press done. And in my case, it asks me again about uh, pretest failure warning about the overheating. I'm not sure it ever did. I'm, I'm just hoping that it did not. I mean, what else can I do? And then it's, uh, con yeah, now it's giving me the option to repair sectors and we can go one by one or we can tell it to repair uh, this one and all remaining so I'm clicking this one for a few times and then I'm just gonna going with all of them and that's all it takes then it's taking a little while longer and now it's starting another test a short test as far as I can tell. Yeah, short, started short DST to confirm uh, that the repairs worked. So we're gonna just have to wait for another minute or so. And that is it. Now it says passed after repairs or after repairing. And there's nothing else to it. That's all it, it has to say about this. Yep, that is all. So of course we could run another long test, but I'm just gonna trust it on this one. And we'll just make sure not to have files exclusively on this drive. So there really is nothing else left than pressing exit. A log file is saved it in C apparently. And that's all. We can hit Control Alt Delete to restart. And the drive has been saved. In this case, nearly all files were saved as well. I think there are maybe three that had the wrong file size and were unreadable after this. But the rest was fine. So I hope that this little video helped you in understanding what you're getting yourself into when running CDOS for tools. It is a lifesaver in some situations. And best of luck to you saving your hard drives. Make sure to subscribe to support this channel and I'll see you next time. Ciao!